That breaking news out of Taiwan tonight where a 7.4 earthquake rocked the island, collapsing buildings and triggering tsunami warnings. Now, there have been several strong aftershocks, including a 6.5 and at least two measuring 5.7 or more. Japan has issued a tsunami alert for the southern island group of Okinawa. Japan is forecasting a tsunami of more than nine feet. Now, this is new video from a news station in Taiwan. You can see the uh, shaking there, the TV monitors shaking, light fixtures also swaying back and forth, and people running for a safe place. So far, there is no word of any injuries or the amount of damage. We will continue to bring you updates as we get them there. Joining me live now to talk about this is seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones. Thank you, as always, for talking to us about earthquakes here. Yes. Tell us about the area where this happened. Prone to earthquakes? Absolutely. Probably almost the most active place in the world. Tai tai Taiwan in general has about 10 times the number of earthquakes as California does. So, And this earthquake happened on the East Coast. It, the epicenter is south of the city of Hualien, and the after, some of the aftershocks are to the north, and it looks like perhaps the fault actually ran right through that city of Hualien. So I would expect that's where most of the damage is. I've been looking around at some, some pictures of damaged buildings. They all appear to be in Hualien. Now, that is a city of 350,000 people, so uh, plenty of people to be injured there. There's also strong shaking in Taipei, which I think is actually the, the photograph you've got right now. It's quite a bit farther away from the earthquake, but it's a basin. It's a basically a big bowl of loose sediment that can amplify the shaking, just like Los Angeles is. And so this is something we worry about for here. And it looks like they got stronger shaking in Taipei than, say, in Taichung. And I think it's because of the, the basin effects. But I would think it's probably not causing damage in Taipei itself. I want to talk a little bit about damage or possible damage with a 7.4 in just a minute, but this really does love, uh, raise our level of awareness about quakes here. Could any of this happening there affect us here? Are the faults connected at all? No, we're too far away. We've actually done quite a few studies to try and understand how an earthquake in one area can affect others, and it can affect the area that's a few times the length of the fault that moved. So a 7.4, the fault's going to be about 100 miles long. So all of Taipei or all of Taiwan now has a somewhat increased risk. You've probably got for a few hundred miles around this location an increased risk, but not over here on the other side of the ocean. Uh, tsunamis, we're looking at perhaps a wave, a nine foot wave. Uh, what countries could or would be affected by that? The, oh, the one to three meters, so nine, nine, nine feet really is the maximum expected, is predicted solely for, for Taiwan. So th this falls is a, what's called a thrust fault, which means one side moves up and over the other. And in a, if, if that happens under the ocean, the water that was there on top of it gets moved out of the way, and that's what creates the tsunami. The northern part of this fault is clearly offshore, and so it looks like there's going to be a tsunami generated there off the northeast coast of Taiwan. Um, by the time you get to Japan, it, the, the tsunami uh, prediction is for less than one meter. Um, and the, the only good news is that this area is extremely mountainous. It's extremely steep. So, so that means that almost nobody's at sea level. You immediately, you know, have 100, 200 foot high cliffs right there at the coastline. The bad side of that is it would you're much more susceptible to landslides. And I've already seen pictures suggesting there's substantial landslides along the, the coastal road. Well, it happened two hours ago, our time, just before 5 right. o'clock. Um, we haven't seen much video out of there, although we have seen pictures of landslides. We're getting early reports that uh, buildings collapsed there. Tell us a little bit more about their infrastructure. Uh, do they have earthquake standards similar to ours? Oh, very much so. I mean, they do have 10 times as many earthquakes as we do. So they're, they have great engineers. They have really strong building codes. Like all countries, there's some problem with with corruption and, and lack of enforcement of some of the building codes. But in general, they're very strong. The only collapsing buildings I have seen are in Qualian. And it looks, as I said, the fault goes through Qualian. I mean, I mean, they might be collapsing. Some of them might be actually a place where the ground underneath the um, underneath the building, one side is now up 10 feet compared to the other side. Uh, no building stands up through that. And um, I, I do know that uh, about 20 years ago, there was the GT earthquake that went through the city of Taichung on the on the west side of the, the island. 
And the majority of damaged buildings were one that were actually affected by fault offset. Whereas in California, we maybe only see 5% being fault offset and 95% being the buildings failing. So um, they have very good building codes, but when the fault goes through the building, there's not much you can do. And when it's 7.4, I mean, in terms of what we've experienced around here. Right. We haven't gotten this one. They clearly got a lot more shaking in Hualien. Um, and, um, but, you know, in Taichung, this earthquake 20 years ago, same sort of thing, a seven and a half right in the city. And very few buildings were, were directly damaged. It would tended to be fault offset. So they have done a very good job of construction. And, but there are some things that can't be prevented. And fault offset is one of them. The fault moves. That's what causes the earthquake. You don't stop it. All right. Dr. Lucy Jones, as always, thanks so much for your time and your expertise on this. We appreciate it.